Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make a card for fun and we're gonna use some fun techniques and we're gonna do a lot of coloring with our alcohol markers. And I just did this um, tag because I figured I need a gift tag uh, to go with my card. It's for my sister's birthday. So by the time this video goes up, her birthday will already have been celebrated. But I like to do a little tag like this because instead of just you know scribbling my markers on a scrap paper, I actually have something to show for it and something I can use and I can work out composition stuff as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stamp this layer which is gonna be kind of the background panel it's gonna be on a colored card and I'm gonna use this really big flower stamp and uh, the stamps I'm using today are from Stampendous. I picked up this stamp set at a stamp show about a year and a half ago, and it has yet to see ink. And I was so excited to find it because um, I had seen it and passed it by, and then I was afraid that I wasn't going to be able to get it because sometimes stamps get discontinued. Hopefully this is still one you can buy. Um, it's called... Um, Hummingbirds. <laughs> I think that'll be easy to remember since there's all kinds of hummingbirds on it. Um, and I'm using a big die cutter plate to uh, act as my stamp mount because I don't have a stamp mount that's long enough for this because it's a really big, um, a really big stamp. And I always make sure that I give my uh, my stamp plenty of time for the ink to transfer. And I'm using Memento ink because I'm going to be using alcohol markers. Okay, that probably is going to do the trick. Perfect. I'm working on a just smooth white cardstock. I think I'm working with Nina, but I've got a couple different cardstocks kind of mingling in my cardstock stack, so I'm pretty sure it's Nina. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's a high quality cardstock, even if it isn't. Now, the other things I want to stamp are some hummingbirds, and I've got this other piece of paper here, and I'm going to stamp a few. And I'm actually planning on using some wobbler uh, springs to attach these to my card, so they're actually going to be um, cut out and attached, and hopefully they'll jiggle and be really adorable. I hope so. Who knows? But I'm just doing this for fun, so I don't really have to worry about it too much. And let's do the little one, too. Get a couple little hummingbirds on there. Uh, I like this set because it was only $12, and that's a lot of stamp for $12 to get all these, to get these three stamps. And they also have stencils, which I used on the car, on the tag, because I stamped the, um, I'll show you here. I stamped my birds first, and then I put the stencils down and I inked around them. I actually could have put the stencils on top and then stamped the flowers all over it, but for whatever reason, I wasn't thinking about that. And I did some messy inking, but hope, but that's see, that's why you do it on a tag because who cares, right? <laughs> you save the good, save your good work for the, uh, for the, uh, the other thing, for the real card. Oh goodness, you know it's late. I'm actually filming this is quite late. Um, all right, we're gonna go back to this. And um, we will color one of the flowers together. Now there is, there's a couple different ways you can go about this. There's my way and there's probably the correct way, but this is the way I like to do it. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see better. There we go, hello there. And won't we focus? Can we focus? Hopefully this focuses right up. Um, I like to go dark to light. And um, the reason I like to do that, we'll do this flower right here, uh, is because I find that by getting the dark colors in first, um, it kind of takes a lot of the pressure away and it also gives me a little bit of structure. And then I want a little bit of that dark underneath that petal there because it would be a little bit of a shadow there. And then I'm gonna go in, and that is uh, called Very Berry. It's just kind of like a, a magenta color. And this is kind of a little bit of a lighter magenta color. So I'm coloring over what I just colored. So it keeps that ink wet and allows it to blend a bit. If you are working on marker paper, which I typically don't work on for cards because it's so thin, but if you are working on marker paper, um, you could go right in and basically lift up any of that ink with any of the lighter markers very, very easily. But uh, I just find it a little flimsy for card making. And these are, um, I treated myself to the, uh, the Blick Studio brush markers because they look so much like Copics that I had to try them out. And I have to say, I am so impressed with these. I'm going to do a review on them where I actually sketch on marker paper um, with them because I, I think they're as nice as Copics. And when I compare them side by side with my Copic markers, I mean, they're almost indistinguishable. So then at this point, if I want to have a little bit more, um, a little bit more definition I can go in there with my darker color it's not going to be so severe because it will uh, blend out I do want to kind of feather just kind of work on just the tip of that so I can kind of be gradual and feather that out and then just kind of go over the edges where they meet where the colors meet 
and it blends really nicely this way, I think. Now the benefit of working on marker paper, especially if you're sketching, is you have that, you, you can re-wet the ink so easily. Uh, the other benefit is you don't use as much ink. If I, if I flip this over, you can see all of that ink that has, um, that has bled through, and that's soaking right up into the paper. When you're using marker paper, there's like a, almost like a plastic film coating on it, and it keeps the ink puddling on top, so you don't use as much. So that's something to consider when you're, um, when you're doing that. So let's do another, another flower together, and then I will finish the other ones off camera so you don't have to uh, sit around and watch that. So I want the inside, inside that circle to be lighter, so I'm very careful um, that where I start my, my lines, I'm not going into that circle. And um, let me pull that a little bit more. And then I'm going to go in with this medium pink. And you know what? Use whatever alcohol markers you have. I mean, I like the tips on these. I like the feel of these in my hands. But to tell you the truth, use whatever you have because I the ink is about the same in every marker, um, every alcohol marker. There's not a huge difference. I find that, I mean, some are easier to blend. I find like that Sharpies and Bic Markets and Spectrum Noirs maybe are a little tougher to blend because I think because their colors are a little bit darker, so they kind of just grab the paper really quick. But um, but generally, there it's the same ink, you know. You're paying a lot more for a certain brand name. And I'm just going to go with that light color in the middle. And if you do want, you can put... Um, like a little bit of yellow on there if you can see the stamens. And then I can go back in with my medium color if I want, if I feel like, um, I feel like I have plenty of that dark color in there, but I can go in with that medium color if I feel like I want to feather that out a little bit more. You know, just use your eyeballs, look at it, and do what you think it needs. And I'm going to finish up the rest of the flower petals on here, and then we're going to do the leaves together in just a moment. Now we're going to work on the leaves, and again, I like to do the same thing, and actually these will blend easier. Reds, purples, and pinks are more difficult to blend because those colors tend to stain, stain more, but the greens are much easier. So I'm going in with my darkest green, which is kind of, uh, it's called leaf green, but it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a light olive color. So I'm going in and getting the veins in with that. Then I'm going in with my medium green, which I'm using, um, a spring green, and I'm coloring right on top of what I already did, and I'm extending the color a little bit. And then finally I'm going in with chartreuse, which is a really, really bright, almost a neon green, and just um, coloring over the place where the spring green uh, overlaps there. I can c color over the entire thing if I feel like it needs a little more blending. Now just be careful you don't put too much color on because it could make everything wick out. Um, which means it could make it kind of go on beyond the line where you stamped. I don't find this problem with the Nina Classic Crest paper, but I do find it sometimes with like the Georgia Pacific paper that you can find at Walmart or Sam's Club. And I'm not saying don't use that because um, you can totally deal with, deal with that. It's not a huge deal. Just make sure you go within the lines a little bit. So there's my dark and my medium going right over that and extending it just a hair. And then my light color, which I will go from the edge to probably about an eighth of an inch overlapping what I've already done. And this little turned over part, I'll color just with the light area and I'll get a nice dimension. I'll also use this color uh, to do all the stems and buds. Now you can see my stamp skipped in a couple portions, a couple spots. Um, once this is dry, you can go over it with any black pen that you have. If you're going to use a, uh, like a fine tip Sharpie, uh, just make sure that it's really dry, otherwise it may feather because it's the same type of ink. Otherwise you could use like a Micron, um, that would work just fine because um, it's a different kind of ink. So it won't feather, it won't mix in with what you already have there. So uh, so don't worry about that if you, um, if you have that situation happen. So I'm going to finish uh, coloring these in and then I'll show you what I mean about outlining with the black. Another tip I wanted to share is that you can actually like do all your dark green portions and do all the middle green portions and do all the highlights. So it saves some time and you can skip around, especially with a color like green that tends to blend really easily. So I'm going to use a micron just because I don't have to make sure that everything is completely dry before I go in there and I can just touch up any lines that I have. You could also use um, any sort of like water-based marker for this and it's not going to interfere with the alcohol ink. If you're using a Sharpie, like I said before, like one of these, um, I use these all the time, these ultra fine Sharpies, Totally do that, just make sure you give it plenty of time to dry and you're going to be all set. So once you have touched up any of your um, 
any of your design, then we can move on to the hummingbirds, which have had plenty of time to dry. Doesn't really take very long. And uh, I'm going to look at my tag for reference. I'm just going to put that off screen because I want to make this nice and big for you. We'll color the big one together, and then it's the same idea for the smaller one. I wanted to have a, like a, kind of like a ruby-throated hummingbird, but I wanted to stay with the same colors that I had been using. Another thing is that I did not purchase the dies to go with this because I have a scan and cut machine. So so I'm going to be careful to keep my lines within, my coloring within the lines um, because that way I can use my skin and cut machine and I won't have to fussy cut this. So kind of keep that in mind um, if you're doing that. If you're using a die cut that cuts it really close, I'm not sure. I think the, the Stampendous dies cut really close. I'm not 100% sure. I would double check. But if you are, then you can go outside of the lines and, and not worry about that. Now I was just about to go hop onto the little one and, and color that dark color because um, that's typically how I work. I typically work fast but uh but we'll just do this one together so i'm blending over with my lighter my midi medium color that's lighter than the darkest one and then i can actually go right in um and if i feel like i need to lighten up an area i can go in with a lightest one and it kind of pushes the pigment out of the way and erases it or or just brightens it up a little bit kind of highlights it not really necessary but it's nice to know how to do that I'm going to now work with um, a couple different brands here. The thing that I love about collecting markers, isn't that awful? I like to collect them. Who cares about using them? Um, is that they work together. So it's not like I decided that, oh, well, I got these now. I'm just going to get rid of all my other brands. No. Actually, Prismacolor was the marker that I began with. Um, and the reason for that was that I found a really good price on it. I, um, I bought a few... Uh, in different lighter colors because because I had some Sharpies and some Bic markets so I knew I'd be able to get the darker colors very inexpensively that way so I bought lighter shades of Prismacolors and it worked fantastically and then um, I received some Copics I've never actually purchased a Copic, Copic marker I received some from my mother for Valentine's Day one year and I did really like them um, but honestly I have to say you can achieve the same results with like Prismacolors or Pro markers or or whatever. It's just you have a different you have different tips. This is a chisel tip and a bullet tip. Um, you might actually prefer a bullet tip to a brush tip. The nice thing about a bullet tip is since it's stiff, you can actually force your blending a little bit better. Um, it really kind of pushes that um, the ink around a little bit more. So you know it just depends on what you what you prefer. Some people prefer brush tips. Some people prefer bullet tips. So I'm just kind of going over those darker teals. And teal, that's another color that's kind of, um, that kind of wants to stain a bit, but it doesn't bother me. If you want a better blend, you can actually go over with a really light color first and then go back, go in with your darker colors, and a lot of people do that. I find that to be, um, I find that it takes a lot more time and I don't enjoy it quite as much. And I like, I just like getting my darks in right off the bat. Something you'll also notice when you're working with alcohol markers is that um, they will, the lighter the color, the drier they'll feel. Now I'm going over to that really light green. I try to reuse the colors as much as possible that I've been using um, just because it gives harmony to the piece, just like if we were painting. I like this color. And it blends in really nice. So you don't have to just use colors that are right next to each other. Now granted, I am not like a marker instructor. I just do it for fun. I'm happy with the results I get. Um, if you want, you know, you know, you could seek out somebody who does a lot of marker artwork if you want more marker um, instruction. But my aim is just to help you, and you can get the the results that I'm getting. If you want, if you don't like it, then you know, go look at what somebody else is doing, and maybe you like their techniques better, and that's totally fine. I don't want to have to have 300 markers in order to create some artwork, so that's why I do what I do the way I do it. I also felt like I wanted to warm up the chest on this bird, so I'm going to go in with this really light um, sandy color. It's actually called sand, and that blends really nice. I find the earth colors blend a lot better, and they can kind of um, they can kind of neutralize a lot of colors and make them look a lot nicer. Just make them uh, kind of kind of mellow out a little bit. And I'm just dabbing with the tip of this marker to get some of those brown feathers in there, and that's going to also neutralize it. You can go around the uh, eyes and mouth a little bit. I think it's pretty. I really, uh, I really think this is a fun, 
set to color. So when I'm confused, if I'm coloring something and I'm not exactly sure um, how the uh, the bird looks, or like I just got a black and white stamp and I'm not exactly sure how to color it, I'll just go online and I'll search for images of that particular bird, and then I will um, I'll use that as a guide. And if you lose your highlights, you want to add bright anywhere, just go ahead and use a white gel pen. I do that quite frequently. I even have one right here. If I lost a sparkle in the eye, I could just color it right in. I could put the highlight back on the beak. You want to have a good steady hand for that, but that's the white gel pen is wonderful for that. So what I'm going to do now is color the other hummingbird, cut this out, and then we're going to put our card together. Okay, now I have um, all my little things ready to go, and one thing I noticed was that my wobble spring here is actually a little too big, so I'm going to see if I can cut it down a bit and use it when we get to that portion, but I wanted to get rid of some of the white in the background, so I thought using the stencil would be really nice, and because uh, it's just going to be some like subtle leaves. What I'm going to do is use a... Um, I'm going to use a sponge. This is just a makeup applicator that's not the cosmetic wedges from the dollar store. Folded it in half and put hot glue in a bottle cap and stuck the ends in the bottle cap. I get asked about these a lot. I know I explain them a lot, but it's because I'm asked about them a lot and it's so much cheaper than going and buying foam blending tools and they work so well. So I'm just like, I don't want to have it really solid. I am going to be inking with color dusters too. So this is just a really kind of light background treatment that I want to get here. I could flip it over if I wanted a little more versatility with my stencil, but then I'd have to clean it and risk kind of smudging some on there, so I thought I would just kind of wing it, just kind of turn it a few different ways and hopefully get enough um, enough diversity with the pattern that way. I'm just going to blot and smudge, and you can see where the ink overlaps each other, you get kind of like a darker area. I just think it's pretty. It's fun to see what happens, and I mean, these stencils are are old. You know, it's fun to get those old supplies and give them a little new life, I think. Let's give it a little bit more over here. Now, since this is ink, I'm going to need to wipe these off with a baby wipe before I store them, because that ink will transfer, unlike paint, onto the next project. I'm also going to go ahead and get my edges do some of the edges anyway, the edges down low. I like to ground um, work with uh, with ink a lot of times, and then I'm going to do my edges up high with some blue. These are Distress inks. I really like them for blend blending background. Um, I don't use them a heck of a lot, pretty much just if I'm doing some like stenciling uh, or background techniques with my cards. Um, and you don't need to have this. You can do this with any dye ink. It's just the uh, the added, um, I think it's glycerin in the inks, just make it go a little bit easier. Now, another trick that I have to share would be to use stencil brushes. This one's a little big. You actually could go smaller, even with like a Q-tip, and um, you can fill in areas that, you know, between your stamped images a lot easier. Now, if you were trying to do this background with like alcohol markers, it would be very frustrating. Even with watercolor markers or watercolors, it can be very frustrating to go in and get a, um, a good blend without a bunch of lines. So, I find brushes to be just so much easier, and then what I'll do, if I can, if I have enough brushes, which I pretty much do, that's why I'm using a larger one here, I just keep them all in a jar, and I'll keep like one brush for red, one brush for blue, one brush for green, and so on and so forth, so I don't have to wash them. And then as the ink builds up, you actually don't waste as much, because the more you use it, the better it gets. So now I'm switching to these bigger brushes. These are called color dusters, and they've been harder to find lately. I don't know if the company Judykins has stopped making them or what, but they are a little bit more difficult to find. Um, but I think you can go and get any sort of like uh, natural hair brush from like Harbor Freight. They have brushes called chip brushes, which are like you get like 36 for 10 bucks. So it's very economical. They have long handles. They're a hardware store product. But I think they would work just as well as these. And some people have told me that they've gotten brushes from the Dollar Tree in the makeup section that have worked really well. So um, I think they're called uh, Kabuk, Kabuki brushes, something like that. Somebody got some, one of my viewers got some in a dollar at the dollar store and said it worked, they worked fantastic for this technique because they were looking for color dusters and, uh, and we're not having very much luck. I think I need to re-ink that ink pad. <laughs> it's not giving me the amount of ink that I want. So you get a much uh, more subtle look when you use a brush versus a sponge. So I'll actually probably go in a little bit more with a sponge because I, I don't want my stencil design to be that um, prominent. 
So I'm just going and I'm sponging in something just to kind of tone that down a little bit. The sponges are a little bit harder to get a soft blend. Maybe it's because of these homemade ones. Maybe store-bought ones give you a softer blend. I don't know. Um, but I think I also want to do a little bit of the green around the whole border just because it's kind of pretty. I like a mottled out-of-focus background. It makes your coloring stand out more. Okay. There, I like that. Um, now I want to look at my focal images here my little hummingbirds and I think I'm gonna try to do the spring with the big one anyway so um, actually I've only used these a couple times before so you peel off the backing I think I'm gonna try sticking this on and then just trimming away the excess let's try that try to cover up as much as we can get as much surface area connected and then, I don't know what I did with my micro scissors that I really like to use. I'm just going to try to trim off the leftover clear part. I have no idea why. You know what, though? I think they were, there were some kids were using my craft room today, so I think they may have used them and put them away somewhere that is a surprise to me. All right. Now for the bottom, the thing I don't like about these, and maybe if the manufacturer is watching, there's probably a fat chance of that. But if they are, I'm going to tell you something. I wish you wouldn't print the your manufacturer information on the sticker part because if you stick that on your card, you're going to see that unless you have a really big image that you're putting on there, and that's kind of annoying uh, because you don't want to see. I don't want to see that royal blue printing when I stick that down. I want just to see. I want it to kind of like hover like it's some sort of magic trick. So I'm going to cut off uh, a lot of that because I don't want to see that. So hopefully there'll be enough on there to stick it. I hope. Alright, so we'll stick that down. I think I'll see a little bit of the adhesive. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Maybe I should have kept my background lighter now that I'm looking at it next to my... Ooh, I don't know if that's going to be sticky enough. Might have to hot glue it on afterwards. Oh, there, look at that. It's kind of cute. Look, it's going to flutter. I really would like this one to flutter, too. I'm going to see if I can do that on another one. And you can see along with me. So this is the top part. We'll stick that down to our hummingbird. You could actually make these with... Uh, I have a, a video tutorial on how to make these just with wire. Um, so you can you can totally DIY this. Uh, I'll see if I can cover up that whole spring there. Um, and it's not terribly difficult. It might stick out a little bit more than these do because they're not like a nested coil of wire. So that's the only thing you might want to hand deliver it because it probably will cost you extra postage. Whereas I don't believe this will. I think this is flat and light enough that it wouldn't cause you extra postage. And I believe you can purchase the Wobbler Springs from Stampendous, the same company that, um, that makes these stamps. I think they might have bought the Wobble Spring people company. So I should call them and say, can you do something about the words here? Because that's just a real bummer that I've got to look at that, that, uh, that packaging. So I'm cutting it right off. Hopefully I've got enough adhesive there. I think I will. It's just a little lightweight thing. So hopefully there's enough there. And if not, I can glue it. So yeah, there we go. And let's put this, because I think it really, this really makes the card having that little movement on there. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so the card base I'm using is just a craft card, craft card base from the craft store. I buy like those 50 packs because they're very convenient. Now, if I took that tag and just stuck that on there, I mean, that would be a pretty card. There's nothing wrong with that. So, I mean, if you don't need a tag, I'll stick that on the card and then you have another card ready to go for next time. Uh, but I'm just going to use my ATG gun and adhere that down. I actually had to go across the uh, across the basement to get my ATG gun because I'd used it to adhere backing paper to a painting I had just framed for my sister's birthday. She had admired um, one of my paintings, so I thought, "Aha! That can go in the uh, the gift basket." Whoops! Ah! I did not line that up very well. All right, let's try that again. Oh, my thumbs! It's late. Won't be late when you're watching it, but it's late when I'm filming it. 
All right, so it's not a terribly exciting card, but it's fun, and I hope you found that the coloring um, techniques helpful. When this flattens down, it, even though it overlaps the uh, the card, the colored panel, it's still going to fit in the card envelope just fine. So, um, and you could add more to it if you wanted to. You could add some glitter or some white gel pen or whatever you think that the uh, the composition needs. But I just think the fact that these move is super fun, and um, I hope you give something like this a try. Again, the stamps that I'm using is by Stampendous. This is called Hummingbirds, and these are called Action Wobble Springs, and I will have a review on these markers coming up. I just wanted to use them for a couple different things before I made my final opinion on them. Um, and this isn't sponsored, it's just me having fun on a Saturday night. I know how to party, guys. <laughs> That's the time I'm recording it anyway. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and share this with your crafty friends. Until next time, happy crafting.